Hi everybody, this is Gat Saad. Hope you're all doing well. In several of my books, I discuss the evolutionary roots of dark side consumption. These are consumer-related phenomena that appear to be maladaptive uh, from an evolutionary perspective. Things like pathological gambling, eating disorders, compulsive buying, uh, excessive physical and financial risk-taking, excessive sun tanning, pornographic addictions. And so I look at the evolutionary roots of these behavior. And the general idea is that you can take an adaptive mechanism that becomes, for example, hyperactive, and then it becomes maladaptive. So take, for example, OCD. Well, the idea that we should have evolved the capacity to screen or scan the environment for environmental threats is perfectly adaptive. The problem is that when you are caught in a loop, so for the for the person who doesn't suffer from OCD, there is a flag that rises that says, hey, check the back door to make sure it's closed. Wash your hands to make sure you're not contaminated with any pathogens. Then you attend to that concern and then the flag goes down. Well, in the case of the OCD sufferer, you wash your hands and then the flag goes up again immediately. Then you wash your hands again, flag goes up immediately. So there is this hyperactive loop. Uh, so the adaptive process, when it is uh, activated within some normal range, it's perfectly adaptive. When it becomes hyperactive, it becomes maladaptive. And so I took uh, some of these ideas and then I argued that when it comes to dark side consumption, many of the phenomena in question are exactly manifestations of adaptive processes that go haywire and hence become maladaptive. So I published several papers in medical journals. Uh, Well, in one particular medical journal, I looked at uh, suicide uh, ratios, male to female ratios around the world from an evolutionary perspective. I also looked at Munchausen syndrome by proxy from an evolutionary perspective. And I looked at OCD from a an evolutionary perspective. So specifically, I looked at sex differences in the epidemiology of particular obsessions and compulsions. And I argued that we can use the evolutionary lens to predict when a particular manifestation of OCD is more likely to be you know, male-dominated, female-dominated, or equally likely to occur across the sexes. And uh, the way that I did that is by basically looking at various manifestations of OCD and seeing whether they map onto a sex-specific evolutionary problem. And so again, I, I wasn't originally coming as an OCD uh, expert, but by having the evolutionary lens, I was able to very quickly make uh, predictions uh, in an area that heretofore I was uh, someone who had not done any research in the area, which brings me more generally to the idea of Darwinian psychiatry or evolutionary psychiatry. Many of you might be surprised to know that much of clinical work when it comes to the mental health profession is not at all rooted in evolutionary theory. One of the reasons why I decided to not become a clinical psychologist or a clinician in general, I even at one point I thought about going into psychiatry had I gone the medical route, is uh, I thought that a lot of it was built to use the term of uh, Robin Dawes' great book, House of Cards, much of the mental health intervention strategies were really rooted in quackery. Not to imply that there isn't valuable science that, uh, of course, uh, guides some of the mental health interventions, but a lot of it was pure quackery. Certainly when we think back of many of the folks from the psychoanalytic movement, uh, none of it is rooted in serious Uh, science. It's certainly not within the purview of the scientific method. You have some charismatic guru, he he or she proposes some sort of uh, theory, and then off, we're off running. And so that had sort of dissuaded me from going into clinical work. Also, I didn't see myself, uh, I didn't think that I had the right personality to be a clinician because I, I, I thought that I would probably bring the work home and I would suffer greatly having to hear of other people's problems. Now, the irony, of course, is I've become the therapist of the world, where now people from all over the world write to me to share with share with me the various issues that they are facing. Uh, but in any case, Darwinian psychiatry, the, the, the book that first introduced me to... Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a bit of a glare. 
is Darwinian Psychiatry by Michael McGuire and Alfonso Troisi. Uh, amazing book. So they look at things like depression, schizophrenia, phobias uh, from an evolutionary perspective. So think, for example, about uh, the various phobias that will cause someone to go see a clinician. People are not afraid of uh, fast-moving cars or guns. They're afraid of phobias that are very much an indelible part of our evolutionary heritage. They're afraid of spiders, and they're afraid of all sorts of dangers that would have been uh, relevant uh, in our evolutionary ancestry, even though uh, a lot more cars and a lot more uh, you know, guns kill us today. Very few people, I gather, go to see a clinician because they're afraid to go out of the house because they might be hit by a car. But a lot of people may not leave the house because they're afraid of spiders. So there you have it. Uh, this gives you a, another example of how evolutionary theory can be used uh, across endless domains involving biological agents. It really amazes me that psychiatry and clinical psychology could have uh, erected the edifices of knowledge for you know well over a hundred years without having been informed by the evolutionary lens. But now there's a growing number of psychiatrists and clinical psychologists who are very much uh, uh, entrenched in uh, you know, the evolutionary lens. So there you have it, folks. Uh, hope you're having a great week. Tomorrow is my last uh, class of the semester, wrapping up my seminar on consumer behavior, which is an MBA course. Wrapped up earlier last week my undergraduate course, Understanding Our Consuming Instinct. Great bunch of students really had a great semester and that's it hope you're doing well if you appreciate this uh, channel please consider supporting it in any way that you can cheers everybody